Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Housing, officially episode 24. My name is Brennan Thomas, and I'm the co-host here alongside Stephen Thomas, chief economist and founder of Reports on Housing. Today, we will discuss the most recent news and statistics, a surging inventory, price reductions, national pending sales, home values, and much more. But first, Stephen, what is going on in the large Thomas household? Summer. Yep, that's right. <laughs> uh, it's summertime and uh, summer, it officially began. And that's why the summer housing market begins when my kids get out of school. So as soon as the kids get out of school, that's called summer. I don't care if summer starts June 20th, with all the kids out of school, summer begins because so begins all the distractions. So our distractions have already begun and they're already, we've had kids that are going to the beach, they're going to the pool, we need to get tan, you know, that type of thing. And so very, very busy. We're beginning that right now. It is unfolding before our very eyes because sports are done. We actually got our Saturdays back for at least a short period of time. And now we've turned into official Ubers, Ubering around our kids all over the place. They have a lot of camps coming up. So thus begins, like I said, summer distractions slows down our market just a bit. But that's what's going on in our neck of the woods. How about you, Mr. Uh, I believe that Arsenal is uh, their time off right now. So what's going on? How are you filling up your days? I am so bored. <laughs> I'm doing good, though. Um, life's just been busy. I mean, we've been watching a heck of a lot of stuff um, in the economy, which I'm sure you will get to. Um, it's everything's sort of happening right now. It's sort of crunch time is what it feels like. And we're seeing all these different headlines and so many different things going on. It's just hard to sort of zone in on the, the correct stuff. But my life's been good. Just just cruising as usual and uh, love living life and recording this podcast. So I can't complain at all. But Stephen, before we actually get into the nitty gritty of real estate, like I said, a lot has happened with the economy. What has happened with some of the most recent economic releases? Well, uh, this is an ex it was an extremely important week. Last Friday, we got PCE. That's personal consumption expenditure. And PCE came in. It's coming down nicely. Inflation pretty much looks like it's, it's, it's moving the right direction and it's, it's getting uh, an, uh, under control. PCE is the better of the two inflation indices that everybody likes to quote. CPI is the one that everybody is in love with. However, CPI is, uh, it's kind of broken. It's not the best. Uh, it's just, a, it's not the best gauge of, of where prices are going. PCE is another gauge of what prices are doing in all different aspects of the economy uh, that we all are concerned about as consumers. Uh, and it's, like I said, coming in nicely. We're at 2.8. It's going to eventually make its way down to 2%. That's not really what the big problem is. And the Fed, the Fed isn't stating that because it's everything looks like it's going in the right direction. What they're worried about is inflation reigniting, uh, aka the 1980s. Har it harkens back to Paul Volcker in the Federal Reserve way back in the day. So that's that's what they're worried about. I'm not as worried about it. I I as long as, uh, as well as a lot of other economists firmly believe that the. Fed is too restrictive and they should have already uh, made their rate cuts, but they've kind of boxed themselves in the corner. And that corner is they want something to break in the labor side of things. Unless something breaks major in the economy, they're just waiting for labor to come in. Now, at the beginning of the week, we got job openings. Job openings really came down substantially from about eight and a half to just over eight million. And it's looks like it's going to make its way down into the 7 millions this year, which is where we were prior to the uh, pandemic. So that's kind of where they want to be. They want to be in the sevens, where we were prior to the pandemic in the sevens. And that's looking like a better balance. Now, uh, today, that was at the beginning of the week. And rates really made their way down beautifully. And we were right at that 7% threshold. I think it was at 7.03% for two days. And then along came... Uh, today, when we're recording this, June 7th, Friday, the jobs report, the, the jobs Friday, jobs Friday came out and it was way hotter than expectations. 
So expectations were 180 and this was way up there, like at 250,000. So it was or whatever it was at. I can't remember it right now because uh, my mind is blinking, but it was, it was way too hot and uh, unemployment. Uh, at least that was the, so that was a negative where we're adding way too many jobs. It looks like the overall job market is way too hot. However, unemployment ticked up and it's been ticking up. So it went from three point, uh, it was at 3.4 at one time, made its way, went from 3.8 earlier this year to 3.9 to 4%. So it just hit four, uh, today. So that is contrary to all these jobs we're creating. Unemployment is is uh, increasing as well. So, but that's not what the markets were focusing on. The markets were focusing on that very data point. It's extremely important because it kind of articulates where the Fed is is uh, going to be from here. So, that's what's going on. What happened with rates today? Unfortunately, they bounced a lot higher. So they were coming down and boom, they bounced off that low that we hit that 7.03%. Now they're like, I think across the, the United States, it's like 7.16, somewhere around there percent. So that's where we're at right now. So now that we've sort of talked about the craziness of the economy, um, what's happening in the real estate world with supply, demand and expected market time? Yeah, so supply is been increasing that's the story last year it was decreasing all the way through for most of the country all the way through april i i I go to some markets like i I believe i was in i was in clark county yesterday las vegas actually in henderson speaking uh, at a casino in one of the uh in one of the many different conference rooms and we were uh we looked at it it actually last year the the inventory kept on falling until it got to June. So inventory kept falling. Th- this year, we've had inventory that's been on the rise. And pretty much it's kind of been the opposite of, of last year. We had inventory falling. We've had inventory rise. And it's continuing to rise. Now that we're into June, it continues to go where it's been going all year long. And so we're getting more and more homes that are available. So inventory is rising. Demand is identical nearly to last year, maybe a little bit hotter. And our demand is actually looking at pending sales activity. So it's very, very similar to last year, maybe a little hotter. Some markets a little bit hotter than uh, than uh, last year at this time. Some markets a little bit less. But overall, it's been on par, which is why you're looking at closed sales very, very similar year over year. And there are some markets that are realizing more, and there's some that are, mar- uh, are are really on par with last year. There aren't that many markets that have less closed sales than last year. So uh, the, overall, and that's on the backs of having interest rates that are stuck since the start of April. And even prior to that, we were above 7%, but they've been stuck since April 1st, above 7%. I mean, we flirted. We got down to 6.99% for a day and uh, during that time period, but it was for one day. We've been just stuck above 7%. So that's the, uh, uh, the, what's, what's been going on with rates, and it's been adding to this. Market time. Our expected market time is based upon supply and demand. Well, what did I just tell you? I told you inventory has been rising. So it's been getting more and more inventory, more sellers competing against each other. And demand is the same as last year. So if demand is the same as last year, but there there are more homes and far more homes on the market than last year, that is slowing down our market on a week to week basis. So what we're seeing is that market times are a lot slower than where they were this year at the same point in time. And so it feels a lot more sluggish. And there are some markets that are even slower than where we were in June of 2020. So it's starting to pop up above 2020 when we went into the pandemic and it first got really hot. So we're making our way very close to where we were prior to COVID 2017, 18 and 19, as far as market time, the speed of the market. So for a lot of people, they haven't felt that in a long time during this time period. So They're just feeling what it felt like in 17, 18, and 19. It takes a lot longer. And your expectations, if you're a homeowner, should not be of instantaneous success. It needs to be, this might take a little bit longer, and we better price our home right. So that's really what's going on. So what do you expect from the Federal Reserve meeting based on the data that we have so far? Uh, By the way, the meeting will happen as uh, we release this episode, I believe, in that morning. Yeah, so the 
uh, we release our uh, these podcasts after we record them on a Friday, the following Wednesday. And uh, so they're meeting next week. And by the time they get to Wednesday afternoon, uh, East Coast time, 11 uh, a.m. our time, Jerome Powell, who's head of the Federal Reserve and all the federal presidents. So he's head of he's chief of staff over there, pretty much the chief guy. He's going to get up, march in front of a bunch of reporters, and he's going to do a presser, the press conference. It's the it's from the uh, it's just a recap of the uh, Federal Open Market Committee meetings that they have. And from each time that they he reads this, it it sounds the same as the prior month with variations. And then what everybody does is they actually look at the variations from the speech and they say, see how they've changed their language from last last month to this month. They just look at the compare and compare and contrast the two and see what are they saying? Because they're now we're trying to see if they're changing their minds on certain th- aspects of the economy or different things that they're tracking. And then that becomes a story all, all in and of itself. And then there's a press conference that follows that Q&A. Now, next week's meeting and also on Wednesday, they'll release everything on the Federal Reserve's website. One of the big things is going to be it's, it's going to be the dot plots. Now, every quarter, Every three months, the Federal Reserve releases their uh, where they think that their short term rate that they control, it's called the Federal Reserve short uh, short term rate, uh, that where they think it's going to go over the course of the next year, also the next several years. Now, they can't really look beyond the next several years. They're having a hard time even looking through this whole entire year. But in that, you know, we'll look at the number of dots where they stand. We'll be able to tell how many rate cuts they expect. And three is totally off the table at this point. The only way that that can happen, because it looks now based upon the data that we will not get that rate cut next week. We're not going to get that rate cut in July. Then the following time that they meet, because they meet every six weeks, then it's not until September. Now we're all the way in September. Now they could possibly go in September, then they meet in November and then they meet in December. There's just, there's uh, not a big chance that they'll even go in September if, the, if all the numbers come in because they don't really want to affect the election. The next time they meet is right after the election. Then, then they won't be influencing the election or anything like that. So they'd have to have a lot of economic evidence in order to do it. There will be a lot of economic evidence that come out prior to that. And long-term rates go where they think the Federal Reserve is going to go. So you'll actually see if we get that kind of economic evidence, you'll see rates come down even if the Federal Reserve does nothing. They might wait, wait, wait. So there is a strong probability that we only get two. So probably when they come out with these, this dot, dot plot and they orchestrate where their interest rates are going to be, it's probably going to look like two rate cuts for the rest of this year. So, uh, And then the next time that they do that rate where they announce the rate cuts is another 90 days. So for June, that's July, September. So September will be the next time. And then it's December. So we're running out of room. They only have, uh, we're at the halfway point. They only have another, what, six months to make any kind of change. They're not going to do it next week. So six months to make three rate cuts doesn't look likely. It's now looking like two and, and many, many people are now talking one. So if uh, next week from today, which would be this week as this episode is released, um, if we had lower rates, what would we expect of supply and demand? Yeah, so we're not going to get lower rates yet because uh, we have to get underneath of uh, of seven. And, and there are, next week, guess what comes out? I forgot to even mention CPI comes out. So CPI is not moving things as much as uh, for the Federal Reserve because they're they're secretly they're saying that they're they're so concerned about inflation, which they are. That's what their their mandate is. But inflation's coming in. They're more worried about jobs. That's why this week was so important. But yet this CPI report that comes out next Wednesday will be on top of the uh, will be on top of the Fed uh, uh, press conference. So the two combined can really move rates. Now, let's say hypothetically that the uh, it's still they're still talking only two rate cuts, so nothing really happens market, but CPI comes dramatically down and we get rates that come down considerably. We could make our way back down into the underneath of that 7% threshold that we've been talking about. Now, that's such a big, giant hypothetical. It's most likely not going to happen, but let's say it hypothetically does. That will have a... Once we get into the sixes, it's going to have an immediate impact where we're going to start to see the supply, the amount of supply 
will start to be eaten into. The more that we get interest rates down lower and lower, it's going to invite more and more borrowers, buyers into the marketplace. So buyer activity will increase as rates go down. It's just because the capacity to purchase, it gets easier. The size of the home gets larger, the more rates come down. So that just, it kind of is a catalyst for more, uh, more demand. And supply, the more that interest rates get down lower and lower, it will encourage more homeowners to place their homes on the market. Now, there is that lock in effect where there's a lot of people that won't make a move, but interest rates have been stuck for high for so long that there are more and more people that are inclined to place their homes on the market in spite of the fact that we have rates as high as they are today and they have a low prevailing rate. They're just getting tired of waiting. It's still precluding a lot of homeowners from making a move, but there are more people that are saying, yeah, done. I'm done waiting. We need to make a move. We'll wait. Down the road, we'll be able to refinance, hopefully. And uh, that's what they're saying in the backs of their minds, but they want to make that move. So that's kind of uh, w- what we can expect. And what, what we'll expect with if inventory starts to to flatten out and demand starts to rise, we should see that the rise, the, the slowing of the market where the expected market time keeps on growing. So the more market time, the higher and higher it gets, the slower the market, that should stop. And if rates continue to go down, we'll actually see market times, expected market times start to dip and go down. So it would get faster. That actually happened in 2019 because keep in mind in 2018, we had interest rates that hit 5% and they slowly but surely made their way down. And by the time it got to the second half of the year of 2019, we left 5% in the, in the, in, in the rear view mirror and we made our way way down in, in terms of interest rates. And it, it was a catalyst to a lot more activity the second half of the year. And we watched market times actually improved the second half of the year. That could be what we have in store in 2024. And I didn't mean to rhyme. <laughs> so would you say that the higher the prevailing rate, the more sensitive we are to rate drops? Yeah. So that's kind of what I've, what, what I was alluding to with more homeowners coming on the market right now, we're already seeing it that can you imagine we've been stuck above the 7% threshold yet there are more homes com- coming homeowners that are coming on the market, not because they have these, uh, these high rates, so it makes them easy to make this this choice. It's just they're tired of waiting. So the longer we stay up at this threshold, the more that we get used to this, that any kind of drop in rates is really going to be a catalyst to a change in the marketplace. I used to, uh, and we subscribe to, once interest rates make their way down to 5.5%, more homes would come on the market. It really is going to be a big difference once we get into the fives, period, because 5%, the last time we were in the fives, five. Uh, less than 6%, so 5.99 and below, with any kind of duration, you have to go all the way back to August of 2022. So that's a long time ago. Shoot, we're at June 2024. We'll be in August in two months. That'll be two years in, in the rearview mirror. So the longer we hang with these higher rates, the higher that rates could go and it actually be a catalyst to more activity happening. So, uh, like I said, used to think it was five and a half. Now it's, uh, you know, 5.9999% will really make a difference for our marketplace. So on the topic of, um, rates, like you were talking about earlier, um, if rates were to fall, is it safe to call it a real estate thawing? Uh, yeah, it would be a thawing for sure. Uh, there would, so really where we're at right now is the overall marketplace is kind of frozen. We aren't getting a ton of homes on the market. Even though I said more homes are coming on the market, let me put a gigantic asterisk by it. Not a tiny little one, a tiny little print. I want everybody to understand we have far fewer homes coming on the market than where we were prior to the pandemic. So yes, we're accumulating more homes on the market. Why? Because there are more homeowners coming on the market compared to that low threshold that we established last year in 2023. It was still too soon since, since rates shot up. But now that it's been a lot longer, we are getting more homes coming on the market. So there are more homeowners coming on the market, but not as many as prior to the pandemic. That is very, very important to understand. So that is, uh, as, as rates come down, we'll see more homes come on the market, even more than today, 
uh, the, the rate will even go up. So it'll be even more homes than 2023, A. And B, there will be more buyers in the marketplace. So right now we have almost the same number of buyers as we did last year because interest rates are still as high as they were last year or higher during this time period. Very similar right now year over year. So we have very similar uh, demand pool, yet that will only increase as interest rates drop. So now that the, buy, the buyer pool starts to increase and demand increases, and then we have more supply coming on, now we have more activity. Now we're doing more closed transi- transactions. The only thawing that will take place is when rates drop. We'll get more homes to come on the market. We'll get more buyers in the marketplace. Demand will increase. So will the number of closed sales. That is a thawing because we are way off compared to where we were uh, in 2020, even 2020, 2021, and even the first half of 2022, they were all great years. As a matter of fact, 2021, it harkened to the days when it was the busiest year in terms of units going all the way back to 2005 in many, many markets. So we're 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 just going to welcome more and more transactions, which is a welcome sign for anybody that's tied to real estate because that's where the recession has taken place that never occurred. There is a recession. It's in the terms of the it's in terms of the number of units of closed sales, very very low, decades lows as far as numbers of closed sales last year and this year, slightly up compared to last year, but that was easy to bounce off of that low threshold that we established last year. So can you explain why the inventory has been increasing so much recently? Is it because home buyers are revolting over steep prices? Yeah, that, oh boy, I saw an article, won't mention who that was with. So I actually wanted us to add that piece. And why did I want us to add that piece? Because that's that's a nice little narrative that they just made up to get headlines so that there would be more clicks. And that's what uh, everybody's looking for, new, fresh content headlines, because it's the same headline, not enough supply. Now we got more homes coming on the market. Okay, that's the big uh, narrative this year. There's more homes coming on the market. How can we spin that? Ah, we have more homes coming on the market because buyers are tired and revolting against these this huge uh, these huge prices, these steep rise in prices. Now they're revolting. They're not buying. I've already said it. We have the same number, if not a few more buyers in the in the marketplace. We have more pending sales, a few more, not much than last year. So we're doing a few more closed sales nationally than last year. And that's what we're seeing in the markets that all the markets that we're tracking from the Bay Area to all of SoCal to Clark County, Vegas, Maricopa, Phoenix, everybody's doing a few more transactions than than last year at this time, but it's not much more. So demand levels are staying the same. Why? Because rates haven't changed much. Even with more homes coming on the market, the, there's only a certain number of buyers. It's not being... It's not being properly taken care of because we're also stuck above 7%. So that threshold of buyer activity is not that high. And the only way to get that level of threshold to go higher is with a drop in those rates. So uh, really, we're building this inventory slowly. And it's because there's only a certain amount of demand out there. And it's not going to suddenly increase with rates remaining above 7%. And and we're see, we're realizing that in all markets. That's why across the United States, what are we getting? More homes that are that are coming on the market. There are more homes coming on the market than last year at this time. So we're able to finally accumulate homes on the market because it's it's outpacing demand. The number of buyers actually in the marketplace. There are not fewer buyers that are revolting. I'm not purchasing. There are only a certain number that can even afford to purchase in this marketplace. There's only a certain amount of cash, and there's only a certain number of borrowers, buyers that are out there that have access to a lot of cash from family and friends, and that are giving them huge amounts of uh, giant down payments. There's not a lot of that to go around, so we're seeing a lid on that. And so demand's remaining the same and will not change until we get that drop in rates. So with inventory increasing so much, I am now starting to see articles calling that buyers are gaining the upper hand in most transactions. Would you say that this is true? Certain price points, yes. Not all price points. Entry-level housing, uh, they're starting to gain more of an advantage than they did last year. So it's all about who, who, where the negotiations favor. Last year during the spring market, uh, it was 
And earlier this year, it was definitely lined up in favor of the sellers. We started off with six and a half percent interest rates, not a lot of homes on the market and demand started to, to climb really fast. That negotiations favored sellers like crazy. And they, and they had lots and lots of offers they could choose from, right? But as the more and more homes came on the market and they're, they're competing, you have to understand the higher the price range in, in any market, the higher the price range, the slower the market is, the longer it's taking to, to sell a home, which brings, begs the question, how's your price, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? It really, you'd need to come out of the, the uh, starting blocks at the right price. Otherwise, you're foolishly wasting everybody's time. You're wasting your own time. You're wasting all the buyers that are looking at your property's time. You're wasting your real estate professional's time because you're not going to sell those high prices as the market continues to slowly slow. It's not like falling off of a cliff. It's slowing methodically. More and more homes coming on the market. Demand's coming down a little bit. Why? We're in summer. Spring is when demand peaks and inventory rises. We're in summer. Kids are, are already uh, beginning to come into my office over and over again, and they are interrupting me. And they want to go to the beach, and they want to go on vacation, and they want to, and they want to, they want to, they want to, they want to go to Starbucks. They want all these things. I understand they want to do that. It's called summer, so they're going to have fun. That's going to be distracting for anybody that's looking for a home, and uh, it's it, it will it will. Uh, hurt the flow a little bit, just a little bit. So we'll actually get supply that continues to rise and demand that slowly falls until rates drop. So according to Redfin, a percentage of homes with price cuts reaches it reached an 18 month high. Are we seeing that many price reductions right now? Yeah, absolutely. So the last time we saw a ton of price reductions that they're referring to 18 months ago was when? second half of 2022, when uh, interest rates were going from uh, three and a quarter percent all the way up to 7.37% was the height they reached in October. That was such a gigantic shift that we built a giant inventory. It wasn't giant. It was nothing compared to where we were prior to the pandemic, but we were building an inventory nonetheless because a lot of buyers were backing off. They weren't purchasing and we saw demand definitely diminish year over year. It looks way off. Like I said, right now, year over year demand isn't changing much. What we what we have is uh, we have this uh, this uh, slowing, this slow slowing. So because there are there are uh, more the market slowing a bit. A that's that's a bit of an issue. We we are slowing, and uh, it, and there's more homes accumulating on the market. As more and more and more homes accumulate on the market, now you're competing against more. If you're not priced right, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, there's a reason for that. It is not the marketing that is going on on the property. I mean, it could be if you have if you didn't do your your homework and land with a professional. But now, if your home's on the market and you're working with a professional and you're not getting any offers after a certain amount of time, nothing is it. it this market is no longer instantaneous except for the entry level price ranges in most markets. And so, and, and everybody understands that the higher the price, the longer it's going to take. You really have to come out at the right price. And over time, really quickly, you're going to learn how was I on price? Was I really good at figuring out where my price should be dialed in? And price is not how it, this, this, this home made me feel. And uh, it was where I raised my kid or where I, uh, you know, where Julie learned to ride their bike and Johnny learned to ride a skateboard and they busted their tooth on that brick. That's that, that those are great, but that's not what buyer doesn't come in and, and uh, buy the memories. What they're buying is location, condition, upgrades, amenities. If you upgraded your, uh, your, your kitchen 10 years ago, it's not a recent upgrade. It's now already worn and dated and it's not brand new. So you have to take all that into consideration when arriving at price and comparing it to other properties out there. How do they stack up with everything that I just listed? So that's how you properly price. So the major takeaway of this episode from what it seems like so far is just price correctly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. take home. All right. Well, according to CNBC, pending home sales in April fell to their slowest pace since April of 2020. If the U.S. were to keep that pace, what would happen to home prices? So I'm not I'm I'm not a big fan of the of the national uh, pending sales things that some some of them do because some of them are adjusted for 
uh, adjusted for various reasons, seasonality and things like that. I, I like looking at all the pending sales. That's where I, it, if, I, if I was doing the whole entire country, I'd be able to comment better on this. I'm able to comment on the big swatch of the country that I'm dealing with in the West. And, and, and these are markets where people think things should be so darn slow and there's going to be, it's definitely going to slow down a lot. I'm in the, we're in the West and that's all of SoCal, uh, even Santa Barbara, we even track Sacramento. We, so most of California, Santa Barbara, and then it's, uh, Maricopa and it's Vegas. So big chunk of Arizona, big chunk of, of, uh, Nevada. So we've got this big Southwest and up California, uh, idea of what's going on. And pending sales are not that different year over year. I've already talked about it over and over again. So where they're slowing down to 2020, that's just another one of those headlines based upon the numbers and the way that they track it. I don't know how they track their pending sales. Uh, we, we do it truly based upon uh, pending sales activity. We take total pending sales, but we, we take this 30 day snapshot of pending sales and it really hasn't uh, it, it's really year over year has not changed much. Like I said, so, uh, I'm not that concerned The I mean, it, that's a story for them to talk about, but really it just, it's, just, it's a story of we're stuck here until we have rates that fall. And then we'll see this elevation of pending sales activity. That's it. So on the contrary, the U S hit a new all time high for home prices, according to the case Schiller for March. Is there anything that could change this pacing or are continuous home value increases seemingly inevitable? Well, Case Schiller is, they take, they're like a month behind everybody. So everybody recently just reported April and they reported March. And Case Schiller actually uh, takes into consideration the trailing three months. So it's January, February, March. That's three months. So I really could care less what's happening in January. So I'm not a big fan of Case Shiller as far as tracking home price indices. It's been around for a long time. It's been very, very useful, but there are way better uh, home price indices that we follow. And uh, so there's a number of them that are out there. The ones that we are looking at still were hitting all-time highs. And uh, But right now, with what we're seeing in the metrics now, that's going to show up in the closed sales 60 days down, 45 to 60 days down the road. So if I'm showing you that market times are slowing down right now, and it's what we're placing into pending status is right now, it's going to be a little bit different because it's a little bit trickier. Buyers are starting to get a little bit more of a negotiating room there. It's going to translate to prices not going up as quick. And when's that going to show? Well, it's not going to show up in, when we're reporting on the closings of May later on this month. It's going to start to look, we're going to start to see it. I mean, it could ultimately, it could, but we're, when we report June at the, uh, by the time we get to the end of July. So that's when we're going to see it in, in these, and, it, and it's such a lag to it. So that's why it's very, very important if you're within real estate at all to stop looking at, at so closely at closed sales statistics like home price indices as far as where the market is today. It tells you very well where the market's been. It's a reflection of pending sales of the past. Instead, like what we serve up in our all of our reports for all the different counties are available numbers of homes now today and pending sales activity today. And what's the expected market time? That's the true speed of the market. And what we're watching, what's happening to the speed of the market? It's been slowing from week to week to week. And it's not been a big slowdown. Like from week to week, you might see a slowdown of the expected market time. Like right now, all of the market went up four days over the last two, uh, uh, week. Well, that's not a whole heck of a lot. But now it's four days over this week and then another three days over the course of the next week. Now it's taking a week longer to sell a home. That's pretty significant. And I'd want to know that. And we've seen it. And that's what we're articulating, that there's a shift that's going on. That shift is real. Part of it is due to summer because that's where we're at right now. But part of it is just this whole accumulation of more homes coming on the market and demand remaining the same as last year. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in to another episode of Let's Talk Housing. If you want to learn more about what's going on in the real estate industry across Southern California, Bay Area, Phoenix, or Las Vegas, feel free to check out our YouTube, or you can subscribe today at reportsonhousing.com. Please, 
please leave us a good review. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to post it to any of our social media platforms, or you can email me at info at reports on housing. We will see you soon and have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.